okay? Yes. Fine. Time. Welcome, judges. I am very excited to be here with you today. I am excited to talk and brew an amazing coffee. You know, I had the opportunity to represent my country in the world stage in the year 2019. And I was short into the finals. I couldn't make it. But then I went into the debriefing room, and one of the judges told me a very valuable lesson. He said to me, you need to remember, this is not just a coffee competition. This is first a brewing competition. And that, I took it to me. I flew back home thinking about that. And of course, my, what my performance is here today will be my main evaluation. But what is beautiful about brewing is that if I do it well, it will reveal what happens to the coffee prior to getting here. And what is that happens prior? From variety to wherever you plant the coffee and picking, drying, they all have an impact on this coffee. The processing. Processing. When we think a lot about processing, we talk a lot about processing, especially in this type of competitions. But sometimes I believe that with processing, we lose sight of the true colors of a coffee. And the true colors of a coffee, I believe they are on the terroir. Why? Because terroir is what makes each coffee unique, each region unique, each coffee farm unique. That's why today I brought a unique coffee from a unique place. This coffee is from Panama. It's the farm is Elida State. It's Geisha Varieta. It grows at 1,800 meters above sea level. It's natural process, what we call classic natural. Panama is a very unique place for several reasons. But one of those interesting facts about Panama is that Panama, in just a very small area, can have soils from seven to three to one million years of age. Also, in Panama, you can be in a mountain, and in one side, the microflora will be impacted by the Pacific Ocean, and on the other side, it will be impacted by the Caribbean Sea. But now, in order for me to express the terroir of this coffee and the uniqueness, I need to focus on brewing. I believe that in any percolation brew, we need to have an even extraction. And to do so, I'm focusing on two things. The first one is now that the coffee is dry. I use this little device. This is called, we call the bullet. And the third line is an exact inch. So it will help me have the same depth in each one of the brewers, in each one of the beds, sorry. And the reason why I'm opening this little hole is because in the middle, when you have a cone, and a cone brewer, the middle is deeper. So in order to have an even extraction and to avoid an uneven saturation, I open this little hole. The second thing I do in order to have an even extraction is my pours. The first two pours that I'm going to perform are small. They are just 40 milliliters each. The idea is to take the coffee to sit in the bottom while it's degassing or releasing CO2. The water will go through at the same rate, and I am avoiding the coffee grounds to stick in the top of the paper filter. My third and last pour is the longest one of all. It's 100 milliliters. Here's where the most extraction will occur. The larger amount of water will create a higher thermal energy. And along with the two first pours and the little hole I open with the bullet, I will maximize this extraction. The total extraction is 180 milliliters for 12 grams of coffee. This is a 15 to one ratio. The, the, the brewer I chose, it's called the Groove. It's fairly new. It was invented by a guy named Stanley Sheehan in Taiwan. And the reason I chose it is because when I place the paper filter for the Groove and I pre-rinse, if I'm able to see all the grooves inside, I know that it's being consistently placed. So it helps with consistency. When we brew, we need to focus on water. The water I chose today is a brand called Aquacoat. The reason I chose Aquacoat is not just because Aquacoat is designed with minerals that are ideal for brewing. What I chose especially because of something Aquacoat does not contain. And that's something called the KH, also known as buffers. The buffers tend to make acidity less complex because the buffers have a likelihood of binding with the different acids of the coffee in something called the pKa value. So what the pKa value does is that it removes certain acids over others. And by not having a buffer, I am assuring a complex acidity. 
Complexa City is something that we really like to taste on these geisha coffees from these specific terroirs, high up at 1,800 meters above sea level. So now, we will begin the next stage, evaluation. We are ready to evaluate aroma first. I will soon hand you the craft. You can pick it up and swirl. The aroma of this coffee is delicate. It's delicate mainly due to the processing. It's what we call classic natural. Just dry under the, on, uh, on coffee beds, under the sun. The intention is to, to have more of the terroir. The aroma will begin with bergamot, panela, red cherry, red fruit, like strawberry and sherry, mainly sherry, and also a florals like orange blossom. I will let you evaluate and I will be back with you in a moment. Whenever you're ready, ready? Excuse me. I believe that there are several farms around the world that share the same characteristic, whether it's soil, whether it's varietal, altitude, and many others. Sometimes the descriptors are even similar, but I believe that the unique combination of all of, of, all of them are unique to each coffee. Please, let's finish the presentation so we can taste. Since I'm not wearing a mask, it's safer. This combination of unique characteristics in this coffee. Please, we, we will taste it with the cupping spoon at the beginning when it's hot, at least four times. And then we can pick it up from the cup. Be careful because it may be hot. The revelation of this brew begins when it's hot with a complex, high citric acidity that resembles sweet orange and pink grapefruit. That will splash all over your taste bud. There is a peach and watermelon bomb. When the coffee is warm, we get notes of red fruit, mainly sherry, but also strawberries, along with jasmine and black tea. Also, we will have a refreshing note of white grapes and watermelon. When it's warm or hot, the body is medium and silky. When the coffee begins to cool down, we'll get notes of florals, delicate and elegant florals like rose and jasmine, also chocolate. And we will get sweetness, like a peach. And every sip you take when it's getting cooler, the peach will feel like a riper, sweeter, juicier peach. This coffee, the sherry note, will start to turn into a sherry jam, long-lasting aftertaste. And the overall revelation of this brew is a refreshing citric and tartaric, high complex acidity, and a medium, juicy, and silky body. It is sweet to the palate, all the way through the brew, to the taste. I believe that the uniqueness of a coffee that is from a special place, a unique variety, that was carefully processed, intended to show the true colors of this coffee, was carefully roasted, can only be experienced by the brew. That's why I feel very proud and happy that I am able to brew this coffee for you today. And I am brewing intended to show the terroir. And terroir has a definition that is mainly soil, geographical position, and also the climate. But, so, but terroir, it's also the people that work, live, and created a culture around a place. And for this specific farm, it's my family. For more than four generations and 100 years, my family have lived, worked, and created a culture around this place. So I'm proud to show you the true colors of a coffee that comes from my hometown, my family's farm in Boquete, Panama. Thank you, time. And that was Wilford Lamastas Jr. Give it up from Panama. 
big fan base over here. Wilfred, if you just come and join me in the uh, interview corner. I love a routine that really honors and pays attention to the entire supply chain. And obviously, you know, with your, your family's history and background and farm, you're in the best position to do that. How do you feel? I feel great of this presentation because I'm able to show everything from A to C. I, I am really proud of showing what happens in the coffee farms, although I know that in these presentations, all the, the competitors do it really, really well. Thank you so much. Thank you, judges. <laughs> and yeah, I'm happy I, I'm, I'm here. This is the second time. Previous, I was a little bit, you know, I didn't want to say too much about my family's history, but now I feel comfortable because I want everybody to learn about this. And I'm not just representing my family, the fact that I have this family in coffee and I have a coffee farm, but uh, I'm representing everybody that is a producer. Uh, and especially, like you can see here, there's a bunch of producers from Panama watching and rooting for me. And this is the beautiful about this about these competitions that you get to people that they all get together. And even if you have competitors, and not only in farming, also roasting, baristas, we all cheer for each other. We, we all cheer for each other and support each other. And I think that's beautiful. It's your 10 minutes of fame to basically say what you want to say to the world. Yeah, amazing. Thank you so much, Will. I'm happy I was able to do it. And we are happy to. So thank you very much, Wilford. We'll see you backstage. Go and relax.